Hello everyone, this is Roz Macy and I at Dubspot, and this is the first in the series of tutorials on creating effect and instrument racks based off natural sonic phenomena. Now obviously I can't imitate nature nor do I want to, but I'm just using these phenomena as a way to inspire myself and to hopefully share my process in creating something from scratch with all of you. So for this one I'm going to at least attempt to create an instrument rack based off of the singing dune phenomenon. In the 13th century, the Venetian explorer Marco Polo wrote about a haunting sound coming from beneath the sands in the Gobi Desert. What he described as being the voices of evil spirits we now call the singing dunes, or the booming sands. This phenomenon, which has been discovered in around 30 dunes around the world, hasn't been fully explained. But what's called singing is actually more like a low drone, with different pitches depending on the place. And they can be as loud as 115 decibels. There's different opinions as to whether the pitch is defined by the size of the dune or if it's caused by the size of the actual sands. What we do know is that these sounds occur when the sand cascades down the face of a dune, like an avalanche caused by wind or by people walking or sliding down it. Then the argument is that the rubbing together of the sands produces these frequencies because the collision between the sand grains causes the motion of the grains to become synchronized. The outer layer of the dune then vibrates like the cone of a loudspeaker and the particular note depends on the actual size of the grain, not the dune itself. To me, it's very similar to rubbing your finger across a goatskin frame drum. You get a low bass tone, but the pitch is determined not entirely on the size of the membrane, but on the dampness of the skins and how tight they are secured to the membrane. So I wanted to create an instrument rack in Ableton Live that was inspired by the singing dunes. So what I have here is actually an instrument rack. All of these are synthesizers. There's absolutely no samples in here. Uh, mostly analog, which comes with Ableton. Analog is another analog. Uh, another one at the bottom. And the drone is actually an operator. Now what this is, is an instrument rack. And what an instrument rack is, is a chain of instruments and effects that can be routed together in order to create a new compact instrument. All the instruments and effects can be mapped to macros, which can then be MIDI mapped to your interface, whichever that may be, by going into MIDI map mode and connecting knobs and faders. Ableton has various instruments that come with it, like operator, simpler, sampler, tension, electric, analog. When you drag in an empty instrument rack onto a MIDI track, you can then drag instruments from your browser whether they be Ableton or third-party plugins within the instrument rack center frame. Now that it's inside the rack, virtually every parameter can be mapped to a macro. And using macros is an art in itself. The key to creating versatile and unique racks is in understanding the mapping browser. This is where all of your mappings can be customized. In other words, you can tell it how far you'd like it to go. You define the limits of what the knobs do when you're brought to the left and to the right. Reversing some parameters in the mapping browser can allow you to create more advanced mappings. They can make a reverb for one instrument come in while a delay on another instrument go out, for example. So once you drop in an instrument, you create a chain. Each chain can have instruments, audio, and MIDI effects connected to each other, which can then be mixed and blended in with the other chains within the rack. So the possibilities are pretty much endless. In the chain called Sandstorm, within that we have an analog. So the first oscillator, oscillator 1, in the analog, its shape is set to the white noise waveform. And I'm using a low pass filter to soften the noise, I can brighten it up. Then over to the right, we have the LFO, which is set to Hertz. The wave for the LFO is set to sine wave and is sent to the pitch modulation very slightly. And there's another additional noise generator where I can change the color a bit as well. Below that we have another oscillator, oscillator 2. And I have the waveform set to sawtooth. And to the right, LFO2 is linked to the frequency modulation of oscillator 2's filter which is on high pass. And then LFO2's rate is mapped 
to the uh, macro called tremolo. Okay, next we have drone. For this I've used an operator. And it's a very basic uh, setting. I've left the first oscillator, oscillator A, on sine wave. Now check out oscillator B, which has the fine tuning a little bit above the pitch of oscillator A by two. The slight difference in tuning creates beating tones. Overtones that occur when two layers with slightly different frequencies overlap create a beating vibration. Uh, the two oscillators are on sine wave. Now on the LFO, I have a very slow modulation. And the LFO amount is mapped to the knob that says beating tones. And the level of oscillator B is also mapped to beating tones. So if you raise the knob, both oscillator B and the LFO become more intense. But they're tamed as well within the mapping browser. Next we have Singing Doom. This is yet again an analog. This time it's different. So you can see I have the waveform set to rectangular and notice the pitch is up an octave. Now the detuning of the pitch is mapped to a macro and its filter is set on low pass. The sending pitch envelope, around 60%, and the rate of LFO is sent to the filter's frequency modulation, but only a little. Then utility is used to bring the instrument in and out, and the reverb and delay are there in order to add a bit of tail as the instrument fades in and out. Okay, next we have the sleeping tune. Yep, it's another analog. This time the first oscillator is set to sine wave and detuned slightly. Pitch descending all the way from 100% and time set to around 62%. The filter is on formant and a bit of it is sent to uh, filter 2 for the second oscillator. Then the knob is mapped to the macro named snore. LFO1 is on sine wave and routed to the frequency modulation and the rate of the LFO is mapped to the snore macro as well. Then the pitch modulation is routed to the macro named tremolo. Then oscillator 2 is on sine as well with an ascending pitch envelope and detuned. Now notice that the detuned knob is routed to the pitch macro and that the LFOs from both oscillators are both mapped to the snore at macro. But in the macro mapping window, you see that one LFO is set to hertz and the other to sync. Then the knob is mapped to the macro named snore. 
LFO1 is on sine wave and routed to the frequency modulation, and the rate of the LFO is mapped to the snore macro as well. Then the pitch modulation is routed to the macro named tremolo. Then oscillator 2 is on sine wave as well with an uh, ascending pitch envelope and detuned. Let's try them all together. All right, so that's my take on the singing dunes. I hope you enjoyed it, and hopefully you'll make some of your own. If you do, I'd love to hear them. Thanks for dropping by. I hope to see you soon. Peace. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself, become a part of our community, and make music.